So often when I discuss the low-end PC market, especially the gaming market, I talk about used parts and components because that's basically where you're gonna get the most performance for your dollar. That being said, I am fully aware that a lot of you are working from a very tight budget, but at the same time, you wanna build a brand spanking new PC and put it all together yourself and have every part in the list under warranty, and I completely get that. I bought my first PC with completely new parts. So today I wanna run over a PC build that will kill it at 1080p gaming, and it will do it at a very good price point below that $500 mark. That'll teach you Project Scorpio, or Xbox One X, or just Xbox, whatever. So let's go ahead and hop into the uh, parts list and look at just what we're working with. We hop into the overview of each individual part I do want to point out that links to uh, Amazon for all the uh, parts in this build are in the description down below at least the ones that I find so if you're interested in just running over to Amazon to check them out yourself go ahead and click down below in the description so first up is the Intel Pentium G4600. This is a Kaby Lake based dual core, but interestingly a quad thread that is a hyper threaded Pentium processor from Intel, which a lot of people feel like sort of uh, made the i3 line a little bit obsolete, at least for gaming, because it did go ahead and give the four threads to the Pentium chip. Now obviously the biggest thing we're interested in here is that $87 price point on Newegg. For 1080p gaming though, the Intel G4600 will be plenty of power at 3.6 gigahertz and uh, like I already said, with those four threads, that gives you plenty in the tank for most 1080p titles, especially if you're willing maybe to bump down uh, some of the settings just a little bit. Now the platform for our processor is the Gigabyte GAB250M. This is a micro ATX B250 board from Intel. Uh, some B150 boards may work with this processor and you would be able to get them at a cheaper cost. However, if you buy a board and the BIOS is not up to date to support KB Lake, then you will need to update the BIOS and you can't do that unless you have a compatible processor to put it in in the first place. So to just bypass any potential issues there, we're going with the B250 board, which will cost you a little bit more, but it will also ensure that you don't have any problems. Now, some of the features that I like about this board over some of its competitors in this price range is that it has four memory slots. So this build is gonna start out with eight gigabytes of RAM occupying two of those slots, but you can easily upgrade that to 16 gigabytes in the future. It also has plenty of drive expandability with six SATA uh, ports, as well as two full 3.0 by 16 PCIe slots, as well as a couple of those by one slots. So to stick with the aesthetic of the motherboard, we have a couple sticks of red DDR4-2133 megahertz Corsair Vengeance LPX. Uh, again, two sticks to occupy two of the four slots, and then you can always just get another one of these kits in the future to upgrade your RAM from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. And the workhorse of the entire build here, at least for gaming, is the EVGA GTX 1050 Ti. This is about the cheapest 1050 Ti with four gigabytes of RAM that you can find right now. Um, if you're willing to go the Newegg uh, rebate route, you can get it for $125. And again, the 1050 Ti is sort of a card that's geared at 1080p gaming. You're gonna be able to max out a lot of lower end titles. Uh, for example, Rocket League, which it comes with uh, for free, you'll be able to max that tile out. Other esports games like uh, CSGO, League of Legends, those will be no problem. And even more modern games like GTA 5, you're going to be able to get probably into the high quality presets, if not the very high quality, if you're willing to uh, fiddle a little bit with things like anti-aliasing to make sure that VRAM buffer doesn't go over its limit. But you're going to be able to hit extremely high uh, FPS marks with this card on the vast majority of all titles. Now to keep storage a little bit under control, at least from a cost perspective, because SSDs are so expensive right now, we're just going with a simple one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive. This is the Caviar Blue. Um, rating in at $50, it's just a very solid hard drive for a very good cost. And as always, because the motherboard and the case give you expandability options, you can always just expand this later on down the line with maybe a SSD boot drive or just another hard drive. 
And speaking of the case, we have the Zion Gaming Series XON-310 here. And if this case looks familiar, you probably saw the recent Linus Tech Tips video on building the cheapest Newegg PC possible, in which case they did actually use this case. And the reason that I'm using it is the same reason they used it, simply because it's so cheap. Now there are some limitations with this case, specifically that there's only one three and a half inch drive bay as well as one two and a half inch drive bay. So if you're gonna expand your storage in the future, you may have to limit yourself to two and a half inch hard drives instead of the full sized hard drives or SSD. But if you completely hate the Zion case, I would recommend some Rosewill cases like the FBM-01 or the FBM-05, which to my knowledge use the same internal layout and do give you slightly more expandability in the drive department, at least in the drive compatibility department. And lastly, powering everything is an EVGA 430 watt, 80 plus certified power supply. Now this is a non-modular power supply, so you're gonna have to fight with cable management, but because our case doesn't have any sort of side window anyways, as long as you get those extra cables tied down and out of the way, they'll be just fine. And obviously a power supply is not something you want to completely cheap out with. Um, I picked EVGA because it's a reputable brand. I've had many of their products and when their products do go bad, they do a great job. At least in my experience, their customer service has been terrific in getting a replacement product back out to me. And of course the 80 plus certification is nice to have there. So there's your complete 1080p destroyer from June 2017. Comes in at a grand total if you're willing to shop around and PC Part Picker link is down below in case you wanted to go that route. The base price is gonna be 456 and change, but if you get all the rebates that are currently available as of the recording of this video, then $421.35 pre-tax is about where you'll land. Also with an estimated power usage of just 211 watts, that power supply is gonna give you plenty of room to upgrade your graphics card in the future, as well as the, the case gives you that option as well. Okay guys, this is your turn to tee off. What would you change about this parts list? What do you like? Do you have a similar configuration yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always guys, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things down below help me out a ton. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video.